Hi everyone, welcome to a new edition of Agora Studio Visit. Today, we are meeting an artist and art educator who creates socially engaged artworks. Influenced by her experience growing up as a woman in Nigeria, Dufan's work often questions and challenges the male-female binary that she grew up with. Let's meet her and find out more about her, her influence, her inspiration, her work. How are you doing? I'm good. I love your, you match, you're matching your work. It's so nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so I, I understand from Andra that you are in Texas right now. Yes, I'm in Texas. Okay. So tell us what we're looking at. What, what, um, I know that we won't really get to see your studio, obviously, because you're yeah. displaced right now. But um, tell us about the newest work that you've been working on, and then we'll get into a little bit more of um, what we've been promoting and working with and, and your background and what inspires that work. Tell us about your new work. Okay. Um, because I've been in a isolation and um, Honestly, I will be sincere. I've had increased anxiety, most especially that I've not been in my space and uh, a lot of uncertainties, you know, with the news. I try to listen l less of the news these days. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm always in communication with my family back home, you know, and just trying to find out what's going on because it's more like you're just inside, but you need to put your ears out there to know what's happening. So. Mm -hmm. I started, uh, I found that I, I use technology more these days. I hardly spent so much time on my phone, but these days I, I could spend like, if it's 24 hours, maybe I spend 20 hours on my phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they show you the report of how much screen time you've used, and you're like, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and then just exactly like I was supposed to meet you. If not because of this whole situation, I don't think we'll, we, we would be having Zoom meeting. We, we would have met, you know. Right. So this is just the order of the day, you know. So because of uh, I keep being on online and I'm isolated, then I decided to use these experiences of being online, you know. So I started to write when I go for work or when I'm going to the grocery stores, everybody's on masks. So I started doing stuff with marks, either marks on the eyes, the, the, the nose, the mouth, different kinds, just the way I feel, I express myself. Mm -hmm. Then again, I got a little, because of space, I can't really walk, you know, because I'm not in my studio, I'm in my friend's place. So I, I, I started working with more smaller surfaces, like I got a jotter, let me show it to you. I went to Hobby Lobby. <laughs> So I got a small jotter and it's so close to me and then I started drawing from every day. I have a friend that I we always chat, so I started drawing caricature of him. Nice. You know, and I keep every day different colours, different faces, you know, yeah. and then I was learning a, a, I started learning a new language, Slovakia language. So uh, everything I'm doing now, I title it Karatina and Travi. That is quarantine faces. Mm -hmm. So, and then I'm like, it's too big. So, and then I started to think like photography, because if you look at the, the, the jota, it has lines. I don't know if you know negatives, like photo film mm -hmm. negative, mm -hmm. when you take a picture. You know, so it looks like film negative for me. Right. And then I'm like, okay. So when you take a picture and then you have this film negative, you go into the dark room and try to expose it. So then I start to relate, like me being in isolation, I'm in a dark room, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think I should make it smaller. And then I got papers. I went to the store. I was looking for anything. Then I got these transparent papers. Mm -hmm. so I started making the drawings smaller. Like, you know, I started making them smaller. And then if I fill up this place, I'll go get more, keep making them smaller. Just like I'm in a dark room trying to work on my negatives. And then possibly in the future, when this whole thing is over, any day I feel like I'll expose them. 
and yeah. refresh my mind on what I've been through. So this is just the little thing I'm doing that keeps me. This is the only thing I can think of right now. I can't work on any other thing. It's just yeah. overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting concept to be able to translate this feeling of, like you said, being in a dark room and then mm-hmm. um, later giving that exposure. I yeah. think it's, really, it's interesting and it's it's different than the work that we usually see from you. I mean, obviously, it, it depends on you, where you are, your space, the constraints and, and everything that's going on. But it's an interesting direction to see. Yeah. I look forward to seeing it on the other end. Yeah. So I know that music is really important to you, typically. Is that something that you're still incorporating into this series that you're working on now, or something that you just haven't really thought about? Yeah, actually, music is really important to me. But, you know, because right now, not all of us are in the same. I'm not in my space, I'm not in my element. You know, um, so I don't listen to music much now because of the, you know, I, I live with my friend and her family. I don't need to disturb the kids or disturb anybody with my songs. Right. They kind of like my songs. And I noticed because I spend so much time on the phone and using the earpiece is, is so dangerous. You know, I started to hurt. And right now I don't even want it to use any earpiece at all. I don't want it. Because I spent so much time on the phone, so I have to be careful because of the the waves and all that. Too much, you know, technology has its own um, um, downside too when it's too much. So, but if I was in my space, I could just listen to my m- music box, like, without putting the earpiece, you know. But mm-hmm. these days, I just found that, find out that I, I think when it's quiet, it's, I just got used to it. It's quiet. It's better for me. <laughs> so, yeah. I think the whole pandemic situation has just... Uh, you know, change a lot of things. I, I know I probably would feel m- much different if I was in my space, you know, but I think it's different times calls for different measures. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I'm enjoying what I'm doing because this whole process of just doing smaller stuff, you know, it's nice. Like, see, I make caricature sketches of um, face mask, <laughs> like everybody putting on their marks and all that. So I just keep drawing and how I feel, keep expressing myself. So Yeah, you have to keep yeah. making and and mm-hmm. seeing where it goes, I think. Just mm-hmm. on the daily basis, just being prolific and being able to use the energy in some sort of way to make sense of this. I haven't been this much grateful for art. Art is really therapeutic, you know. It's mm-hmm. everything, like... I'm so happy. It, it's you know before now I like to make very large pieces. I like to work very large works and all that you know. So, but I've come to see that it's not about the weight or the largeness of what you're creating. You could create something this small, but it's so powerful. It's it's you know it means a lot, and that's why I from the from the first size of work I started creating. You see, they're bigger. You can see yes. the first size, they are bigger, and then I got to this size, and now I got to this size. So I keep going smaller. <laughs> smaller, yeah. Yeah, I keep going smaller, and it's fantastic. So I'm going smaller because, you know, I'm just thinking of that um, negative film, dark room, like, you know, and then, okay, let me do it small, and then hopefully in the future, I could expose it, maybe print it on large canvases, you know, mm-hmm. but it's going to be printing. So I'm using ink right now to work on all these things. And I find the process is very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> very cathartic, I imagine. And it would be interesting to see this, all the small, even if you do make them larger at some point, to see the progression and the evolution of the little guys um, mm-hmm. next to the larger pieces, I think. I mm-hmm. always love the, the sweet little studies. Mm-hmm. Nice. And you know what, uh, you know, for my music, my music uh, most times is the nostalgia of listening to the music that I work with, you know, and the way it makes me feel and the words. So this, from the, these paintings I have the same effect with, on me, just like the music, because I know that after producing these works, 
And then maybe in the future, maybe in two, three, four years after this whole thing is gone, when I see these paintings, it's going to bring me back exactly to the way I was feeling right now. You know, I'm going to see things more clearly, you know, and then then I will really know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's good. Yeah, it's very effective when you can view a work and, and really be transported back to a time and a place and a feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us a little bit. Um, it's nice to see what you're working on right now, but for our viewers as well, give us a little background on uh, some of the other works that we we do have on our site right now um, and how, like you said, the music plays into it. And I know that your work um, involves a lot of social responsibility and commentary on what's happening culturally and, and in your world. So give us a little background on that. Yeah, like um, some of the works I worked with, I worked with, um, I listened to some of the works that are on your site, uh, works that I listened to music of, you know, of artists of old, not like this uh, new generation artists, like artists in the 80s, in the 70s, mm -hmm. you know, and some of them are Italian classics, some of them are Nigerian uh, musicians. Uh, like Fela Nicola Kuti, uh, Osa Dede, and then there's this um, Italian guy. Sorry, you know I'm not Italian. I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna murder his name right now. <laughs> um, I think it's um, Domenico Modugno. So it's an Italian name. I don't know how to pronounce it. The title of the song is Volare, like fly. Mm -hmm. You know that's uh, the, the title of the work is uh, on selfish. It has to do with love, love affair, you know. So, and I have uh, the one on, on Fela Nicola Kuti, I titled it Transformer, you know, and it, it's, the song is on Lady, you know. So sometimes I talk about uh, issues, the way we, we, we females, women are perceived in the society. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of work as a female artist, you know, I always like to use that word female artist. I know I'm an artist, yes. If you see my painting, it doesn't matter if it's a male who created it or a woman, or a, a woman who created it. But my practice from where I'm from, sometimes they look at you like you should be doing something else. <laughs> Do you understand? You know, because what I'm, my work is always talking about certain issues that. Some people feel offended that why am I talking about certain things? You're you say, come on, you're a young girl, go and get married, go and have kids. It's wasting your time, you know. You're too small, you can't change these things, <laughs> you know. So, but because where I'm from, you a, a male child is always very important. Like a, a female child doesn't inherit her parents' wealth, and then when you're married as a woman they demand you to give that to a male child who will inherit your husband's wealth or the whole family's wealth and if you don't have a male child uh, and then if you don't have children at all you're, you're finished <laughs> you know so constant pressure on the woman you know so I even though I don't want to talk about these things because I'm a woman in such a society I continue to feel that pressure and I, I find myself talking about some of these things that life is not about these pressures that they give to us. We also have the right to be free, to express ourselves and be the best at which we can be without trying to meet up to anybody's cut off mark. What, what, why, why is it that the males are not trying to meet up to our cut off marks? They should give us, we should put them under pressure too, but nobody um, is going to listen to that. So yeah. I'm like, these are some cultural differences, you know, that put strain on the reason why even practicing every day is more difficult, you know. So, but I try, I try and I try. Yeah. So I try to continue. Mm -hmm. It's a loaded and important topic, obviously, mm -hmm. I think in, in many culturals, cu cultures throughout the world. I like that you said female artists because Mm -hmm. That's still a challenge, I think, that the art world faces in many ways is, is giving recognition to so many important female artists that 
have come along throughout history and that are contemporary now. I think it's a it's a hot topic for sure. So yeah, true. Like that's something that you speak to in your work. Yeah, and true. identify with. Um, even though you say it, you know it doesn't matter when you're looking at your work, male or female, I do think it's important to include that. I like that you do that. Mm -hmm. So Thank tell you. us a little bit about. I'm just pulling up some of, um, and then hopefully, I, I don't know if Andre, you want to share a screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm ready here. Let me show. Be nice, screen. and then we can look at some of your work together, and you can tell us about some of these pieces. Um, with such beautiful colors. I think you yeah, can see that. this is more recent ones, I think. Yeah, this was um, the unexpected series I did in um, 2019 last year. This this series, um, if you notice, the, <clears throat> there's an image of a woman, you know, an African woman in the background because of the hairdo, the hairstyle. Mm -hmm. Like this one is more like Afro. I use ink. Um, I use acrylic ink. Um, oil pastel, watercolor, you know, and I use um, um, pastel pencil. I use, I use a lot of, you know, I use pastel pencil and um, I think a color pencil. Yeah, I use color pencil, pastel pencil also. For this one. Mm -hmm. That's it. So for me, the unexpected is like um, trying to give more uh, self-esteem to the African woman. Like everywhere you go to, you just have to be yourself, you know, and be confident in your in your skin, you know, and in your own fashion, you know. Because I find myself traveling, you know, I'm, I'm I find myself traveling all over the world and different cultures I meet. So sometimes when you go somewhere and you're looking so different from everybody, <laughs> it takes a lot of courage for you to be cool with the way you look mm -hmm. so i i start to reconcile with this fact that we are different from different parts of the world where we're from so you we have to accept other people the way they look and accept ourselves to the way we look and we shouldn't expect anything you understand so that we don't get hurt or we don't go back into our shell that's why i titled it unexpected so when I show up in a place, I show up unexpectedly. I'm not expecting you to think I'm beautiful or think I'm ugly. I know I'm beautiful and I'm okay. <laughs> so right. that's just what the work is uh, talking about. Yeah, this is the unselfish love, the one that was um, inspired by Bolari, the Italian classic. You know, I was talking about lots of right. um, intense colors. You know, and if you look at it, the, like it feels like a wave, water wave, or mm -hmm. it feels like maybe something out of the universe. So it's just it's talking about the inspiring feeling of love. Like that's why I said on 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 selfish. Like I can see this, see um, perceive this energy, this feeling, colors, and uh, all that. So that's how I perceive it. So this another part of the unexpected series. And this particularly is, is me because I usually have this hairstyle time to time. So that's so it's me. A, it's a self-portrait in some yeah. way. Yeah, it's a self-portrait. Talking about the woman. And I have earrings exactly like this. But you know, I stylize it and all that. So that's me. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. No, again, unexpected series. Yeah, and the, this is the series comes continues to go on. This is like trend hairstyles. These are hairstyles that you see back home, African hairstyles. So. Yeah, this one is a um, stop, and uh, this one is like more of um, like stop violence against women and girls. You know, and that's why I use a lot of red and the stop sign, you know, and, you know, I also um, write text on my work with screen printing. Sometimes it gives a little clue to content and interpretation of my work, you know, so I'm just saying, you know, stop, you know, because it's, it's really wrong. There's a lot of violence against women, girls, little children. You know, I, I cannot overemphasize it, but it's, it's there and I have to 
say stop. <laughs> I have to talk about it because it's every day. It's every day in our society. Most especially people who are close in the family. You know, it's mostly close friends, family who commit this crime. And 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 because of these relationships, at times not all of them are reported in the news or at the police station. But it's happening every day. And these young girls grow with uh, stigma or they grow with this hurt in their heart. And it changes a lot of, it changes their life, you know. So it's something we should really look at and they stop to those things. So we should protect the girl child and then the woman too. So you're in, in some sorts an advocate for, for women rights, for Nigerian women rights. I'm curious, um, do you have artists in your family or how this way of expressing your feelings started? No, I don't have artists in my family. Um, Oh yes, I have one artist, but he's a music artist, not like a visual artist. My immediate elder brother, he loves to sing, rap, and write music and all that. But for visual arts, uh, yeah, I have um, a large um, friends. I have a large community of friends who are artists, and I'm also a member of the Female Artist Association of Nigeria. So I have a large number of women behind me who <laughs> work together. <laughs> you know because we face similar issues and um some of us it's even um we have a lot of women who are artists and they love doing what they're doing but but then again some of them because when they get married their, their spouse doesn't even support what they do and they get laid back you know and some of them because of these things um are so selfish and decide uh, like no, I'm not. I don't want to be laid back, and they put some terms, and then find out they stay without getting married for a long time, and everybody starts throwing stuff against them, you know. So we have a lot of women uh, doing this art, and we like to stay close by ourselves because we understand ourselves, and because when there are opportunities that are out there, they give it to us because we are women. You know, so and then what what I mean is that there's another body called um, Society of Nigerian Artists. That body is um, I'm also a member of that body. That body con consists of all the artists in general. But the truth about the matter is that if there are opportunities, ten opportunities maybe for like if there are grants or exhibition spaces for ten artists, you find that you're going to have eight men and two women. Yeah, you understand. Mm -hmm. So. But if an opportunity comes out for 10 artists in the Female Artists Association, that means 10 women have 10 of that, that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I always prefer to stick with the Female Artists Association because when opportunities come, I'm closer than being in the other, like the general association. When opportunities come to your father, because if it's five, if it's five slots, you have four guys and one lady, <laughs> so yeah so it's and then everybody's and they, and they keep going like no the opportunity is there for everybody you're the woman you have to be good you have to i'm like what do you mean who told you i'm not good like like <laughs> i don't understand like you have to be good you have to work or i'm like well i'm working like how else do you you know they're like you have to try to meet up it's at the place it's not a you know we are all all artists creating at our levels of uh, personal expression. So your you cannot your work is not better than mine, and mine is not better than yours. Mm -hmm. You know, so give this opportunity equally to everybody. Mm -hmm. You understand? I have it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's very important. That's All right. Well. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, we could, it's, it's very interesting. I love your viewpoints. Um, you have a strong viewpoint and strong work. And it's, it's really exciting to see you creating in so many different directions, especially, I was gonna ask you about your medium choice, but I, well, I was gonna ask you how you arrive at choosing your different mediums, because I know you work in a variety of materials. Mm -hmm. But I think, I'll let you answer, but I love that 
so much of it is tied to your concept. And, and I imagine that when you choose your materials, you're, it's, it's sort of an organic uh, process for you. But I'll let you answer. How do you choose your materials that you work with? Yeah, I choose, um, uh, I like water-based mediums. Mm -hmm. I used to really like oil. Oil used to be my favorite medium. But lately, I fell in love with water-based mediums. So I was working with acrylic for a long time. And then lately I fell in love with inks. Oh my goodness. I love watercolor and inks. So yeah. I I want to I try to have this mixed media effect of ink, watercolor, uh, crayon, you know, just mm -hmm. a, a lot of feel, you know, a right. lot of um, different um, elements to the art is, is really nice. You yeah. Know, so. They come together really nicely, especially with your colors, because it's it, I know it can be challenging to keep the colors as bold as you do and as clean when you're using different mediums, but I think you do it beautifully and they're really oh, pretty powerful. They, they deliver a nice punch. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope that we can see the inside of your studio at some point, although this is really nice and... Okay, let me, let me pick, pick up my laptop and see. Sure. Yeah, show us what you've got there. Great. Um, hey. See? So, these are some of the works you see. I use, um, like, foil, like kitchen foil, <laughs> because I'm at home now, <laughs> you know, so... Mm -hmm. Like, I see some people with very, very funny kind of marks. So I just created this. This is not a real Max, is it? No. <laughs> but I see people with very funny kind of looking Max, and I just like mm, perhaps maybe you just close up one. Yeah. Yeah, and this too. And some people wear glasses with Max. Right. So I just create stuff like that too. This is this is another one. You know, with her long eyelash, she's still trying to slay, like a slay queen on a max. <laughs> you know, so I just try to make them interesting. Mm -hmm. And then um, see some of these ones too. Mm -hmm. You know, so. so they have a lot of personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just try to make them interesting. Uh, like that. Yes. Yeah create them different, you know, I love caricatures. I like to do caricatures, abstracts, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. I just try to make them, that's it. So of course, you know, this is this is an improvised studio space. It's not so big. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I- It's kind of improvising it and mm -hmm. making, making it work. But I'm really happy that you, 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 you're willing to show because not every artist is, is, is actually in um, the best position right now in this situation. Some yeah. people are in their best position and some are not, but it's good that we're all still trying to create, you know, it's all a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta keep creating however you can. It's true, a lot of artists don't have access to their studios right now, and so you have to just make it work, you know, mm -hmm. if it means scaling down or changing your materials and what you're thinking about i think it's just important to keep making work and and getting through it yeah yeah well thank you so much this has been a lot of fun now how long are you planning to be where you are when do you think you'll be able to return or yeah um my ticket is for july so but i'm still uh, uh, the airline is not working for now. Everybody's shot, so what, what ears is on the news. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. We'll just get through it. I know it's a slow process. No one really knows yeah, um, when the right time is, but I'm glad to see that you're making work and hopefully <laughs> you'll get to go back and be with your family again soon. Yeah. And hopefully up, up to New York to see us soon as well. Yeah, hopefully. Something. Yeah, I know. I, I can't believe we just missed each other. Um, yeah. That was such a strange week. <laughs> yeah, really. It changed so quickly. I think that's what has been so shocking. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's sunk in a little more now, but just how quickly we went from 
you know, art fair, armory week to yeah, uh, so so everything closed. Very quick. Yeah. True. So True. thank you for joining us and for welcoming us into your studio. Yes, thank you so much. And we, we hope to see you and to meet you in person soon and maybe to visit your studio in Nigeria next time. That would be exciting. Okay, bye. Bye.